Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. I'm joined today with Kim Schmitz from uh, the FCSS in Cold Lake. We're talking about the Meals on Wheels program recently. Um, the price for that program was cut in half. So thanks for taking some time to talk with me today, Kim. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So first of all, I just wanted to talk about for people maybe who have heard of it but don't know the details or maybe they don't know about it at all, what is the Meals on Wheels program? Sure. So the Meals on Wheels program, uh, very simply, is a full course hot meal delivered to people in their homes, typically around 12 p.m., uh, but always somewhere in, in the range of uh, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So it's a full course hot meal delivered by a friendly volunteer. And so who, what are the type of people who are accessing the Meals on Wheels program? So the city of Cold Lake actually recently just adopted a policy just to ensure consistency in the long run. And so within the parameters of our policy on the Meals on Wheels program, we are able to serve seniors who we would class as uh, individuals 65 and up, those who live with disability, uh, individuals who are recovering from uh, recent hospitalization or people who are enduring some type of a, an illness. And then when it comes to the price cut, the cut, uh, the price of it was cut in half. How did that come to be? Sure. So the government of Alberta at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic recognized um, that there were challenges with access to basic needs. And so actually, uh, we were very proud to be able to be asked uh, through our FCSS Association, which is the Family and Community Support Services of Alberta. Um, we were asked by the government of Alberta to funnel applications from local nonprofits in our communities across Alberta, from community organizations who were willing to step up and help to assist, uh, help to assist to meet some of those needs or help people to better their circumstance through through the challenges that they were enduring. And so, uh, we actually here in Cold Lake we received about a half a dozen applications that we sent to our uh, FCSS association, and at the ministry level, those were reviewed. Uh, by several different ministries just to uh, help to avoid duplication of asks, essentially, and determine eligibility. And so one of the uh, applications that we received was from uh, a local society that we frequently partner with, and they are called the Age-Friendly Cold Lake Society. And so that, uh, that society provides public education and hosts a great deal of community conversations, uh, reducing the stigma of aging and uh, addresses issues and concerns related to ageism specifically. And so we felt uh, that we were very happy to support the application uh, that they made to assist the residents of the city of Cold Lake and the outlying areas of the uh, MD of Bonneville in wards five and six. Um, so for those that live in our area, it's really uh, highways 55 west and east of our community. So out to the communities really of uh, Riverhurst and Cherry Grove. And they made the application to reduce the cost of the meals between July 1st and December 31st of this year. And that application was successful. And so as the primary service provider for Meals on Wheels, um, we, we accepted to support their application. Um, it, it, it was their uh, intention to administer the grant, and we are providing the service, essentially. Okay. And uh, what do you think this is going to mean for seniors uh, in the Cold Lake area who access Meals on Wheels? Obviously, they need that support. And um, a lot of people uh, in the community have been, been getting support during COVID-19, but I think seniors, especially um, vulnerable seniors, may not have been getting maybe the amount that they expected or as much as maybe other people. So what do you think it's going to mean for them to be able to save some money when it comes to getting this uh, service? 
So I think you're absolutely correct. Um, I think some seniors uh, are on an extremely fixed income. And I think when we have, uh, I think when we have a demand that, you know, is remaining the same and, and may even be increased, and we have, uh, you know, initially supplies were short. Um, there were, we had, uh, you know, a delivery system that was very overwhelmed. We had people uh, panic shopping to some degree, I think, all over. <laughs> yeah. And so even if someone, a senior, for example, or any of the eligible people uh, of our Meals on Wheels program, I think that even if they were able to get themselves to the grocery store or they were able to uh, have a friend or a family member who could assist them to get to the grocery store, that didn't always ensure their ability to access. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, the concerns that we had for, for individuals were um, food security and adequate nutrition. Yeah. And I think what the high level of exposure of, uh, you know, what we're doing right now, I, I just think that high level of exposure is um, increasing awareness. And so inevitably, it's not only about uh, cost savings, you know, and so for folks on a fixed income, that's absolutely wonderful. But beyond that, I think that it's also a connection to if someone is very isolated, sometimes that volunteer who drops that meal off might be the only contact that that individual has for very long periods of time. And so with pandemic, um, we can't go to the door and wait and uh, maybe have that very close conversation, but we're still knocking and ringing the doorbell and then standing back and saying hello. And so it's often a bit of a safety check. Mm -hmm. Part of our process is ensuring that someone's coming to the door or that if we haven't seen someone come to the door for a couple of days, we're calling that person's emergency contact just as a bit of a safe net. Um, and again, like I said, I, I think that having access to adequate nutrition, inevitably um, people have better health. And they're more connected to other types of supportive community services overall. So I would say that those are some of the larger picture benefits. Well, thanks for taking some time to talk to me uh, today. Just before we go, uh, for people in the Cold Lake area who are interested in learning more about uh, FCSS in general, or maybe accessing some of the programs offered by FCSS, how are they able to um, get in touch with you? They can contact us at any time at 780-594-4495 or they can always email us at fcss at coldlake.com.